welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing with you the results of my June art challenge. June art challenge was Making Colours Sing, Practical Lessons in Colour and Design by Jean Jean Dobby. Dobby. I love this book. Just going to say, I didn't properly look through it before setting myself the challenge. I expected there to be like tutorials, like you know when like you have a project tutorial? That's what I thought I was going to be doing, but it's nothing like that. It is, however, an incredible book. I am only into section... I'm just going to find the page. I got up to greens, greens, and I started push pull. So I only got the sections done so far, and I'm going to continue working through this book. I'll probably do like a section every two weeks. It's an amazing book, but let me show you why I think this. So to start with, I this is pages 16, 17. So the beginning part is putting your palette together. Let's go there first. Okay, the pure pigment palette. Now you may have seen in another video that what I did is I ended up, I started off with a similar palette, but I added and added and added like indigo, buff titanium, different oranges. Like I was like, oh, I want all my favorite colors. Completely missing the point that actually this was about like understanding color and working with single pigments to create the colors you want. So I ended up stripping it right back. We have Hansa Yellow Light from Daniel Smith, Hansa Yellow from Daniel Smith, Burnt Sienna from Daniel Smith, which I may still swatch out, but I'll cover that in the recap at the end. This one is Queen Coral from Daniel Smith. This is Rose Matter Genuine from Windsor Newton. This is Alizarin Crimson Windsor Newton. Then, so these are all kind of like included or they're that substitutes for the Windsor Newton version in the book because she did put like a page on her website that said, oh, if you prefer Daniel Smith colors, these are the ones that you could go for. And I've written them here as well. Then we have the blues. So I have the Windsor blue red shade, I think it was. And this is the cobalt blue. Now, she also says on her website that you could substitute cobalt blue for cerulean blue, which is a lot warmer. So this one is Windsor Newton, this one is Daniel Smith, and this one's Windsor Newton. But I also wanted a French ultramarine, which is over in the very opaque section. So that's why we have four blues. Then with the greens, she says to have a viridian because it is like the most transparent green you can get and it's single pig pigment. And then Windsor green yellow shade. Now the problem with this is it's really staining, as is the Windsor blue and the Elizabeth and crimson so it's really staining so if you want to like lift up anything you're going to struggle but i also wanted just a, a bit more of a yellowy green so this single pigment one is green gold so you can see i've taken out before when i showed it to you i had buff titanium i had indigo i had perlian green i had transparent or orange i had quinacridone sienna i had qu quinacridone gold i had all the things and i've actually stripped it right back and i'm loving this let me show you so as you work through the book, or the first sections that I did, uh, she has like setting out your palette and stuff. But then looking at complements and using luminous greys, so mouse power. She talks a lot about mouse power, how like if you want a colour to look really vibrant and beautiful, you need to put a mouse colour next to it. Because if you put two amazing colours, they're going to vibrate in the wrong way and you're not going to see any one of them as beautiful because they're clashing, right? So she shows you like how to remember your complement colours, complementary colours, uh, in order to mix your luminous greys. And she has like this whole double beige spread and then she shows you. So this is what I mean when I say there's no projects. Like it doesn't have a project where you're replicating this but she does show you okay well these are the different grays that i created and here's how you should make grays as well okay and then we go into oceanic color so let me show you the grays that i did this was ignore this because this is from another time so this was the initial starting point i have my hansa yellow light and rose matter genuine and then when i added that's the combination and I added Windsor Blue to it to get this kind of, it was a little bit too green. I'm sorry, there's like 17 mopeds going past outside for some reason. I don't know why at this time of day. Then we have Windsor Blue plus Hansa Yellow Light and we get this kind of like cool green. And when you add Rose Madder Genuine to it, which is a complimentary, you get kind of like pinky grey. I didn't water these down. I didn't, I should have been, well, you'll see. I should have been paying more attention. I was kind of rushing it. Then we have Rose Madder Genuine and Windsor Blue. And we get this purple, which when you add Hansa Yellow Light to it, you get this kind of grey. Now, you'll see I also did these here. Neutral mouse greys. So this one was with Cobalt Blue. This is Rose Madder Genuine, Hansa Yellow Light, Hansa Yellow Light, and Cobalt Blue. These are not grey enough. Try the exercise again. So I became quite aware quite quickly i wasn't i was being too timid i needed to be braver at mixing my grays so 
then I decided I should really like get to know the colors properly so you can see this is just the most beautiful page so on this side we have like I started with the yellows and then the greens and then the reds so we've got hands of yellow light is cool hands of yellow is warm and then how do they mix and I mixed these on the page I didn't mix them on the palette which I did do later but here I was mixing them on the page and then further down it was like okay well if I've got hands of yellow and I've mixed it with Windsor blue what happens if I add quinacridone coral to it so these are like th mixes of three as are these and I was having great fun and then I ended up being like well I've got this page full of color let's do the grays and you can see that the grays actually now look like grays we've got like a nice kind of like pinky gray kind of darker purpley greeny gray gorgeous gray greeny gray taupey gray like look at all the different grays and I can see what she means by saying like I mean if you look at this it's a gorgeous painting and it's all gray it's all variations of gray um so i can und i understand what she means by mouse power now then at this point though i call these fail grays because they weren't quite right so i still had in my palette the colors that i wasn't supposed to have so this is one example of something that i painted you can see the there's indigo there's transparent orange there's the rose of ultramarine like this is not what i was supposed to be doing but i didn't pay attention i was trying to cheat basically and this one too is a variation as well not using the single pigment colors that i was supposed supposed to and then here's another example dark indigo transparent orange we've got the rose of ultramarine like you can just see that this is not the same you look at this and you look at this you can tell that they're not from the same group of colors and so this was another one that i did again this is rose of ultramarine you can tell how it's separated it's not supposed to be in that palette <laughs> so this was the original late june lout you probably saw this in the video that i did here is the one that i streamlined so i had the semi-transparent colors and then the transparent colors at the bottom so th this no 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 royal sienna could be in there but i took it out because i don't really need it so you can see i actually end up removing maybe like a third or a half of the colors i'd put in this is the day that david got his book published and i was just going crazy and i was like this this is not serving the purpose this is not what i'm supposed to be doing i used the same palette for this kenny moody uh patreon session i used the palette here and i was like i'm just i'm just repeating and doing the same thing oh that's my new drawing box a uh, quick plug i'll put it up here but that's like that's a video as well if you want to go see it and then before i went to the uk i was working through some Ian Fennelly stuff. I left on like the 14th I think it was or the 13th so the 9th it was an evening David was watching something and I was doing some Ian Fennelly stuff and I, it got me thinking this one I love and I was like you know I do love the brightness and the lightness and I need to actually do this challenge properly I need to stop trying to do it like do my own version of it and actually just follow it and do it properly so that is when I did this so these are the primaries for octanic force and let me just show you I've got too many books open because I used too many different sketchbooks so we moved on from the greys we were discovering the octanic power octanic color mixing powerful color and you can see here oh then we went on to the greens so this was a whole section and is that not just the absolute most beautiful page of color this is a gorgeous page of color don't get me wrong but this was mixed on the palette not on the page look at all these different greens grays i got and it's just using the eight eight colors four blues two yellows two ready pinks that's it and i'm just like mind blown by that so then i got good well i didn't get good but i i started paying attention and doing things right here's the octanic colors on the watercolor paper because obviously this paper reacts differently to this paper so this is the painting again there's nothing setting out how to do this she just took an old painting that she had done but she used the octanic method like octanic colors to do this version you can see there's no like tutorial on how to do it so i just quickly grabbed my paintbrush and i was having fun and i just did this all of these colors gorgeous love it so we have them here and i've mixed the grays underneath you can see this is when I took out transparent orange quinciana. This actually is indigo and it shouldn't be in there. Um, I took out these colors. I did like the mixes, but I was like, I don't need all of these. I just need what I'm supposed to have. Then we moved on to creating greens and that's number three, four in the book. Greens, greens, and more greens. And what I love about this is I've seen a few videos recently of other people making greens and I'm like, they just use blue and yellow. And that's what you do, look, blue and yellow, you know, blues and yellows. But actually what she taught in that section was using different reds and then all the kinds of greens that you get as well so here you can see i've still got perylene in at this point and this was windsor this was burnt sienna with ruby 
Union, with Windsor Green, with Green Gold, and with Perlene. But then when you take that out and you add in, so it was Azabath, but with Hansa Yellow, the warm version, and it changes the colour again. Now she says don't use burnt sienna with, because it's an opaque pigment, and she says it's a tertiary that's like multi-pigmented, you can end up creating mud. But it actually, this is a single pink pigment, burnt sienna from Daniel Smith, and it didn't create mud for me. But I am wary of mixing it too much. And then I did this little, so these only use the colours that you see in here now, okay? So we've got the hat. This is the following page in the book, which, I mean, look at this though. This is, oh, look at that, beautiful. So these are all greens. And she has a section about using blue and yellow. Like, look at that. That's all, all those greens not actually mixed with blue and yellow. And then we moved on to the push-pull. Um, and I started this and then I realised we were actually at the end of the month and I needed to pause and actually just take in everything that I'd learned already. So these are, this is my cat in the garden. We don't have a garden, it's a roof terrace. And that's from a photo I took of David uh, when we were in the UK. Terrible, but it's okay. So that's the work that I did in this sketchbook. I also then moved from here. This was at the beginning of the month. This was at the end. So you can see there's a better understanding in my eyes of working with the greens, the, the colors in a more cohesive way. It's still not, you know, it's just like a little quick sketch of a landscape that I made up from my head, but it's definitely an improvement on that. Like if you're looking at the color, right? Definitely an improvement. I think that's all I did in that one. Again, we've got this, which I did early in the June challenge, not really paying attention. Now, th this is badly, I mean, I put into practice everything I learned, but it's badly executed. And I, yeah, I don't think I like this sketchbook. I think that's the problem. David thinks it's quite sweet, but I'm like, no. And so I did the same thing, but in hot press paper. It's not finished, obviously. I did this the last couple of days of June. It was a Saturday, actually. So there's more work that needs to be done on it, but I had great fun. These were all different greys, and then I was building up the layers and thinking about octanic colours, what would I put next to what? And I just had great fun doing that. And I think that brings me... Oh, then I went back to my old ways and I did something crazy. But that brings me back to the last day or the end of the challenge. This was the palette that I ended up with. Very happy with it. I, will, I have been taking it like we're only two days into July, but it's with me at all times now. I've made some notes because I thought it was important to really take a moment and think about what I'd learned from this month. So I will consider consider substituting out the Daniel Smith Brent Sienna for either Indian Red or Quinacridone Burn Orange or Cadmium Orange. And the reason for that, I'm trying to find the book again. So that actually there are two reasons for that. And I might add the orange, Cadmium Orange. She says that, because I don't have a Cadmium Yellow, I have Hansi Yellow. So I've got my cool yellow, my warm yellow. And it's kind of, although I love the oranges I have created in here, like look at those, they're very vibrant and very bright, which I love, but you know, it might be that, it, she says it might be better to actually have like a cadmium orange that you mix with, and then you can like cool it down a bit or warm it up a bit. The other thing is she also uses in light red and Indian red, but she says that they're very opaque and they make mud if you use them in the wrong way. There we go, Indian red and light red. But I am noticing in the greens section, and I've We'll probably notice it more later on that these are the kind of colors that do like this has um, cadmium orange in this one like red cadmium red like indian red if i don't have the full it's not like i need the full spectrum of reds that she has in here it's just that i think the two that i have the rose matter genuine is basically like a pink queen coral is gorgeous but again it's more of a pink and then we have Windsor and Newton's Alizarin Crimson, which is, you know, it's a red, but it's cooler. So I do think I need that warmth from either Quinn Burnt Orange or Indian Red, which is why I've got it written down here. So that was point one. Sorry, I got a bit wordy. After one month of practicing, I now have a better understanding of single pigments and I've cut down my palette accordingly. I can now mix some gorgeous mouse greys and I can do it like it's like I've, because I've done it quite a lot this month, my brain's like it now just gets what I've got to do. And I can recognize greens more than just blue and yellow and how to mix them. Like I have mixed some really beautiful greens. I plan to add in a second pan of both yellows, one for the reds warms, the other for the greens blues. So what I noticed is my cool yellow. It really kind of, even though I wash my brush each time and my warm yellow here as well, they do sound, kind of like absorb some of the green from the blue greens. So I think I just need to adjust the palette, bring these here and maybe put the blues here 
and then another Hansa yellow and light so that they work with the warms and the greens. So it will mean a rejig because she also says that you should keep your complementaries um, away from each other. So reds and greens should be far apart, purples and yellows, well I don't have a purple, and then blues and um, oranges. So I need to just make sure everything is separated but I do think it will benefit me having a warm of each of these to like another one of each of these to use with the warms. And then Continue working through the book, one lesson per week. I think every two weeks is realistic at the moment to further my learnings. I've really, 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 just taking a look. Oh no, that's progress. This is the July that I've been working on. I really, really enjoyed this month. I feel like it's the first month where, because normally I work with a material and I work through and I just use it and I use it for different things, Patreon sessions, my own personal stuff. I don't feel like that's worked as well as this, actually making me understand using watercolors and mixing colors and color theory so i'll finish that to say if you haven't got this book and you can find a second hand copy because i don't know if you can buy them new mine's second hand i heartily recommend it it is not filled with projects it's filled with insights and explanations and you will have a much better understanding color theory color use i think it was helen crier that picked this up at some point and mentioned it it might have been her it might have been sandy hester i can't remember but it's i think by far the best book i've bought this year um i'm just blown away by it so hopefully that video was helpful that is the result of my june art challenge i'm just going to find that page of color to leave you with if you have any questions please do pop them down in the comments below you know i'm always ha happy to chat in the comments and yeah um thanks so much for watching i will see you very soon with another video and yeah have a lovely weekend take care bye Oh my goodness gracious me, you might want to watch another video, oh e. <laughs>